Now, we often have guests on the show who, frankly, are here to plug something, OK? I'm slightly worried my final guest is here to plug someone. Ladies... <laughs> brace yourselves. It is the fabulous Mr Russell Brand! <laughs> Look, look at the state of that, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> look at the state of that, like a sexy scarecrow. Look at him. <laughs> the words of gummage on Viagra being blown in. Why are you saying these things to me? <laughs> I've just arrived. <laughs> How lovely to see you again. Thank you for coming. I love having you on the show because I know I'm relaxed because you're always, you're always a marvellous guest. The other guests are all marvellous as well this evening, but marvellous to have you back on the programme. Oh, Christ, what's that? These Why are you... conventional feet. Why are you wearing flip-flops? It's not really summer yet. Well, I didn't know what else to wear with this, you see. What is that? Some sort of, like... <laughs> What even is that? They're only whooping because they know that you'll have sex with anything. That's why they're whooping. <laughs> what, what are you wearing? This adult human females. That's a very small target group. <laughs> Imagine if we were bisexual. Four puffs and a piano. Crikey, it would be a lovely evening. <laughs> now, you're working in the States at the moment. Are you living in the States or are you living here? What are you doing now? Because I should congratulate you. Aren't why? I? I'm, well, I'm kind of proud of you, even though I'm not involved with you Thanks. as such, but I'm proud of your success because you've, you've made a success of your comedy career over here, very much so, Thanks. and now you've gone to America and you're in a movie and it's opened really strongly, I believe, in the States. You've had great reviews. I have. I've seen the movie. You're very good in it, although it's not hard, though, because you're playing yourself, really, aren't hey! you? Hey! That's difficult! <laughs> because what about this one bit in the film where I get some coral stuck in my leg? I didn't have any coral in my leg, nor have I ever had coral in my leg. And yet, watch this, Jonathan. Ah! There's a coral in my leg! <laughs> that is something of a master class, it has to be said. That's what you do. You say something, it ain't even true. So, what now, acting in a film... Yeah. ..a different experience for you, I would have thought, especially in America, where mm. you're... Maybe this will change, but you're not very well known at all, if well, at all. Well, unknown. Yeah, completely No-one knows who I am, except virgin, in customs. An ingenue, a newcomer, a debutante. <laughs> I know I'm in customs. As soon as I get there, come on, in the special room. Is it because you look this way? Scissor and twist. OK, seriously, have, you, have they examined you? Yeah, every time, because remember, I was a, when, I was, when you're a drug addict, there's no sense going on holiday without any drugs, because you won't enjoy the holiday. So they assume... <laughs> <laughs> which we should establish... Really? We should establish you're not a drug addict any longer. I do not take any drugs anymore. Drugs are bad, may I say. Bloody things. Look at the state of drugs everywhere, yeah. ruining people's lives. But they're because nuisance. of that, and then I lied on the visa entry form, it, used to go, it said a few things. Do you have any drugs? And have you took any? And do you have a criminal record? No, 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 no. Do you want to overthrow the American government? No. <laughs> I do. <laughs> what about filming yourself? Because you're making a movie, and it's a, it's a telling part in the film. It's very good in the film, but, but it's a small part in the film. The film isn't about your character. It's quite a good part, Jonathan. Don't say it's small. My mum's here in the audience, and she'll tell you it's a bloody good part. Go and see for getting Sarah Marshall, and what a lovely part for all us. <laughs> here's what I'm asking. You're very good in the film. I enjoyed the film. Thank but you. But I'm thinking, here's a film which you're not the star role in it. No. Uh, so, presumably, it's a lot of time when you're sitting around, it's not about you, and it's not like... Uh, most of the jobs you do over here, it's your show, yeah. or it's your stand-up. So it must be a different, uh, a totally different working experience. Yeah, you have to wait in a... They call it a trailer, uh -huh. but it's a caravan, <laughs> is what it is. <laughs> like, like a caravan where, you know when you're younger and you go on holiday and the yeah. holiday's much too near your house? Like, <laughs> like Hamilton for yeah. us, or Margate, <laughs> where you could, like, and you think, why are we sleeping in this caravan? We could go home, we've got a telly. <laughs> <laughs> and then when your nan and granddad come through, Oh, nan and granddad! How did you get here? Just going down the A1. <laughs> <laughs> This is Russell Brand's first movie, ladies and gentlemen. This is, that's correct, isn't it? It's your first I was in St Trinian's. Oh, that's right, you were. Slash Harry. Trinian's. Yeah, yeah. I didn't see that. My little girl saw that. She said she liked it. Thank you. That's yeah. endorsement enough. You're supposed to be a film critic. Why aren't you bothered? <laughs> I, don't, I don't see proper films. You're more serious on that, eh? You have to be more grown up. Hello, oh, I've watched this film. You can't just be all rude. I don't shake my head like a fucking <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've been to watch a film. <laughs> Well, she had to know. It's all right. I quite liked it. In this one, Oliver Stone gone too far. You might go like that. <laughs> OK, uh, this is uh, this is Russell Winnie's first American film. That's fair to say, isn't it? Thank it's you. It's called Forgetting Sarah Marshall. It's very funny. If you like films like Knocked Up and Super Bad, you're going to love this because it's from the same kind of guys uh, and it's got that same kind of flavour, which is uh, it's got moments of gross comedy, but at the same time, it's quite tender and mm. rather beautiful. So when's the movie coming out? Mm. It came out. Did you like it? 
The movie? Yeah. It was... Awful, bloody film. I see, it's just ridiculous. Mm. Premise, uh, oh, what would happen if your mobile phone killed you? Why would a mobile phone kill anyone? It doesn't make sense. Like, how can a mobile phone have an agenda and kill people? I told her that when she read the script. Yeah, you were the voice of reason, mate. I like, tried to be, but she didn't listen. Well, going around killing I... people, a mobile phone, like doing murders. Sale, Why couldn't you just take the battery out of the phone? Right, that's it, the battle's over. <laughs> yeah, we've won. I hated it. Well, it's not for everyone, but it... it, it... No, it's ridiculous. Here's my favorite scene. Bling, bling. Hello. All right. <laughs> it could never happen. No, it could never happen. It's a metaphor for addiction to technology. For society, for how we're reliant on technology. I get it. Are I'm with you. It's a metaphor for a crap movie. <laughs> That's strange seeing you in normal clothing there. I know it's a plot twist. Yeah. Okay, uh, so, but you enjoyed the experience and you're making another movie right now, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, a movie called Bedtime Stories. I'm doing it with Adam Sandler. Well, I love Adam Sandler. Isn't he I'm nice? a big Adam Sandler fan. We have him on the show when he's, whenever he's in town. Uh, what's that film about? What are you playing that? I play... Uh, it's a Disney film, and I play a character called Mickey. Imagine that, in a Disney film. Mickey. Do they know about you? Do the Disney company know? Have they seen my bookie walk? Do I'm they really know? worried if they find out what I'm like. <laughs> I'm just... I spend all the time in my caravan keeping my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what, right? It's really lovely, Adam Sandler. I was, like, one day, I was doing a scene with him, and he was, like, doing acting. You know how he's really good at it? Yeah. And I was, like, having to lay down on a bed, look at him, like, doing this scene with him, and he was doing his acting. So what was the scene? What was the sort of scene? Uh, he's telling a story to these two kids, and sometimes... So, like, two... a bedtime story, or...? Uh, yeah, bedtime yeah. story. It's the name of the film, in fact. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. You see how this works? This guy, yeah. It's okay. brilliant now. It's inspired. And he was doing all his acting, and he's so good at it, and magnetic and charismatic, and you start to realise why people are famous, and it's really easy to listen to his mellifluous voice and stuff, and it's easier to look at him, don't want to look over there at that madness. <laughs> right? So, like, so I kept, like, sort of, I was watching him, all <laughs> devoted and dedicated to him, and I think, God, he's really good, I can see why he's such a big star. Oh, I listen to his voice, isn't it lovely? Oh, he's stopped talking now. And I thought, oh, no, I'm in this! And I, I was like, oh, all right, Adam Sandler! <laughs> and I had to do my bit. And then I thought, oh, that's really bad. I've looked like I don't know what acting is, because I'm just watching him. And then, like, afterwards, I went, oh, sorry about that, Adam. I, I'd, like, I got a bit caught up looking at you. He goes, did you fall for me a little bit there, kid? Went, yeah, sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, on the subject of movies, is there truth to the rumour? And I, I know we uh, discussed this, we touched on this last time you were on the show, because your, my bookie work was coming out, and it turned out to be a huge success for you. It was huge really well. success. I mean, it's won an award. It won an award at the, uh, the Richard and Judy had their Galaxy Book Awards. It won something like that, and... Uh, is Best it... biography. OK. Is it going to be made into a film? Is that why they're filming it? Imagine that's... And that's actually happening? That's actually... Ha we live in a world where that book is getting made into a film. Wow. By Michael Winterbottom, the actual genius uh, filmmaker. A very talented British director. So he's making that into a film. And, and who's going to play you? Me. I'm going to play him part of me. Of course. Probably unconvincingly. What about <laughs> when you're young, when you're a little boy? Who's going to play you then? I was thinking of getting a little person. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who's going to play me as a child. I guess you just have to get a child, cos I was saying, oh, couldn't you make me up really heavy and use special effects? <laughs> no, so you actually wanted to play yourself as a child? Yeah. Your fucking ego. <laughs> <laughs> Is that narcissist vein, that, isn't yeah, it? You, you know the answer. Yeah, it is. I said, couldn't it be like an Eddie Murphy film where I'm everyone? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so, um... Well, here's the thing. Uh, well, no, if you're doing your life story, well, you don't, in your book it doesn't come up to the stage when you were first interviewed by me on the talk show. Although that was a vital part in my, my life, a well, turning then, do point. You, do you not think that possibly... I mean, cos I know we could have that scene and obviously we could get Ashton or someone who looks like me to play me in the film. We could have... Yeah, a real beefcake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ashton, well, congratulations on that. Now, my concern is that we'll lose you to America. Oh, no, I like it here. I'm an Englishman. The cat won't come to America. You have your cat, Morrissey. Morrissey, that... You can tell that the cat, given the choice between staying in the garden or coming with me anywhere, he cares more about the garden. Yeah. I think, like, you know, he don't... I think that's he his, don't mind me being that's there. His, that's his land. That's his he place. likes it in the garden. If I sort of say, well, you'll be with me, but the garden is gone, he'd go, no, I'll stay in the garden. He, I think the cat, in his half-hearts, if I died within perhaps an hour, he'd start to eat me. I think... <laughs> I think he'd make the transition... I'd make the transition from owner to food. Quite quickly. In the blinking of an eye. Is he not emotionally connected to you, do you not think? I'd like to think so, cos I don't feed him. Someone else feeds him now, so any attention he does give me is purely motivated by love. Yeah. What's going on in your personal life? Uh, you, you, what's, Jonathan, what's, what's going on in yours, you dirty <laughs> devil? Uh, you know what's going on. Mine, mine is a, it's a, it's a picture of married bliss. Okay? I like it's it when a... I've, I've been to your home. I've invited Russell to my house to several. Uncle Russell, the children call him. I know, I like that a little bit, and it's very... It's all completely safe. And what I like... <laughs> 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 
our eldest daughter is of age. Yeah, yeah. Now. <laughs> It's the new puppies when you're upstairs. That's what I'm worried about. Poor little shots. <laughs> you just had a chance. No. <laughs> here's my worry about you, Russell. Go on. Okay, here's my concern for you. You've created this marvellous carapace for yourself, this strange looking surface of, of hair and teeth. This Slight... is my artist trying to look nice. <laughs> Slight beard, jewellery, and a, and a lady's smock. You've come out <laughs> dressed in all your fine like this, and the ladies it seem fall under the spell of this. You're like some sort of whirling dervish from the 1920s in Turkey. They come, you won't, when you walk in the room, I've seen the effect you have on women. It's like someone set up some sort of like sexual bomb in the middle of the room and they all swoon. Now, it comes very easy to you. Yes. I suspect that on a given night in, in this town or most towns of the UK, if you didn't want to sleep alone, it wouldn't be very hard for you to find someone to, to share your bed space and indeed your body. I, yes, I, tr I really do work very hard to avoid a being in, in a, alone in the bed situation. Okay. I get very nervous that a burglar may come in. If I'm there, if I'm, although I suppose if I was on my own, I'd probably turn on him eventually. <laughs> <laughs> I've come for your crown jewels, you lucky bastard. <laughs> <laughs> But it's all coming, and it all comes through easy to so, so when it's like a child in a candy shop who doesn't realise that his teeth are one day going to decay and fall out, and he stuffs his face, he gorges himself with all these splendour and beautiful fluffy marshmallows... He sounds horrible, this yeah, kid. Yeah, yeah. It's you. <laughs> the kid is you in yeah. the sweet shop of sexual s sweetness. Yeah. And it's all there for you. <laughs> Suck on that. Stuff that. Bite that. Squeeze that. It's all there for you. The Willy yes. Wonka world of magic. I like and it. And so when... I <laughs> know you like it. Especially your description of it, cos you've combined it with confectionery. <laughs> Made it even more delicious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> marshmallow boob. <laughs> it's going to be almost impossible for you to say no to this, isn't it? I mean, how are you going to find the right person, Muscle Brand? I, well, guess what? I thought I found her last time I was on your show, you know, when Serena Williams was on it. I thought, oh, it's her. She's definitely the one. I was sat next to her in that green room, her legs, man. I just, I've got big, lovely legs. I think, oh, I really like to have it off with her. And I was trying to think, don't say that out loud. You know, because <laughs> might scare her. But I was worrying, because she's quite powerful, I was thinking, you know, like I could maybe have it off with her and she wouldn't even notice. <laughs> <laughs> Serena! Like I'd be like a little sort of spaniel. <laughs> She could carry on playing tennis. <laughs> <laughs> did you approach Serena? Did you tell her about this possibility? Did yes, you... as a matter of fact, I did. I, at the time, tried to, like, I used the code for can I have sex with you, which is do you want to come and see my stand-up? She sort of said sure, politely, but yeah. then, like, you know, yeah. and I goes, can I have your phone number? She went, no. And then I go, <laughs> oh, what about your email address? Because if someone don't give you the phone number, go for email address. This... Try and get under the radar. This she is said, persistence. No. She wouldn't even give me that, Jonathan. So you didn't get any contact with her? I did, actually, cos I've got her, I got her email address off someone who works on this show, unprofessionally. What? <laughs> yeah, goes, come on. So someone on this show is working as your pimp? Yeah. As a matter of fact, it's a cheeky little devil. And, like, I'm glad they are working as my pimp, cos I've got the email address. I said, come on, it might be true love. Don't stand in the way of true love. So I wrote her this email, right? Here it is. I've got a copy of it. Oh, this like email. It. OK, I didn't know Russell was bringing this song with me. I bought it because... This is I, what you wrote to Serena. Honestly, I wrote this to Serena, and I sent it. It was during Wimbledon, of course. That's why she was <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah, cos she had a lot of time on her hands there, and she's not going to be doing <laughs> anything she important. She could be bored out of her nut. <laughs> <laughs> All that tennis. Here, so this is what I wrote her. Serena, congratulations on being so good at tennis. But start off with flattery. Yeah, but she knows you're an idiot from that first line. Not necessarily. <laughs> okay. But you think that actually, might work? Actually, okay. <laughs> you really do tennis so well that it's difficult not to develop a crush on you. Ah, I see Good. what you've done there. Yes, yeah. yes. Now she had an injury. I don't know if you know at that I time, Drew Wimbledon. That. She went even with a sore leg, a condition that would have made Monica Seles buckle. Remember all that fuss about her back injury? <laughs> <laughs> She'll like that joke because about when Monica Seles got stabbed by a fan. Yeah, that's a horrible thing to write. I thought what she'll appreciate is an anonymous email from a stranger <laughs> mentioning an incident where a fellow professional was attacked. Yeah, no, <laughs> she's not going to for a second think you might be another violent stalker. This ain't going to freak her out. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like you to come and see me do stand-up. Wink, wink. <laughs> while you're in the UK, or even come to tea with me. Another euphemism. <laughs> I know you're busy with all the Wimbledon hoopla. That was a mistake. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I undermined the tournament, which she's rightly proud of. It's a grand slam. But here, this is a good bit. Yeah. But damn it, woman, you must have some time to nourish your soul and flirt. Oh. It's what Jesus would have wanted. <laughs> Religious. That's a trump card you played at the end there. Use Christ. <laughs> I go, call me or email me back. We must fill our days with adventure in case the afterlife is as serene as your name and not as exciting as your dancing smile. A respectful kiss, Russell Brand. <laughs> <laughs> and then thought, send. <laughs> send that. 
<laughs> There'll be no problems there. Okay. Go into the world with Lee Mail. Uh, and don't uh, come back without an orgasm attachment. <laughs> and what response did you get from Serena Williams? I've never heard from Serena Williams. <laughs> <laughs> no. Ladies and gentlemen, he might look like a <laughs> but, he's... <laughs> but he's actually a lovely, a lovely young man. Uh, it's a great film. Congratulations. It's great to see you making a success in the States. And you've had tremendous reviews out there, deservedly so. Thank you. They've been, it's been going very well. People have been very kind. <laughs> you, you turned it the elephant man. They've all been very kind. <laughs> oh, thank you. You're kind. All right, what, what do they feed you? Potato. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Russell Brand. <laughs> Yeah, why don't you stay and watch the band? That'd be nice. Are you familiar with the Fortinas? Yeah, Morrissey loves them. Yeah, very good band. Thank you to all my guests this evening. The marvellous Ashton Kutcher. Thank you, Ashton. The wonderful Ronnie Corbett, both here, and, of course, Russell Brand. Join me next week, when I'm excited that my guests will be, from the movie Iron Man, Robert Downey Jr. We have Michael Aspel here and Gwyneth Paltrow will be on.